this week, we are gonna be making a really pretty flower arrangement. I'm Carla from Vintage of Decor and I'm self-taught in getting some grocery store flowers and making them look really, really nice in your home and doing a very simple arrangement. So I'm gonna give you all my tips and tricks about that and also a couple tips and tricks on how to lengthen the life of your flower arrangement. Oh yeah, before we jump into making this really pretty arrangement, if you aren't subscribed yet and you love home decor, this is the place that you wanna be. So hit that subscribe button and the little bell so you get notified when we post a new video and let's get started with these flowers. So my first tip is about picking out flowers at the grocery store and you can absolutely pick out the pre-arranged bouquets that they have there. A lot of the times those are super pretty, but a couple of my tips are gonna help you to make those look really nice in your home too and to arrange them nicely, even though they're already arranged technically in the bouquet, that doesn't mean that it's always gonna translate into your vase. So I'm gonna give you a couple tips about that. And then of course, tips about how to keep them alive and looking pretty for as long as you can. So if you do wanna pick out your own flowers, my recommendation is to go with an odd number of flowers. Now you can go with just two, like it would be really pretty to just pair like these two together. So you can definitely go with two, but I would try for like three or five. Today I have five here and it's gonna make for lots of variety in our bouquet. So my second tip is to not just take your bouquet or flowers straight from the plastic into your vase. So even for the pre-arranged bouquets, you're probably gonna have to trim those down to the size of your vase. Um, a lot of times they're a lot taller and you shouldn't just stick it in because then it's not as pretty as it could be and that's what we're gonna get into today. So don't ever just take it straight from the plastic and stick it in your vase. You're gonna to wanna to do these next couple steps. So a little trick is that you could put some tape across the top of your vase to create a grid. And that helps that when you stick in the flowers, they kind of stick in place. I'm not doing that today because I have done this a couple times already, but you certainly can make a little grid for yourself to help the flowers stick in place. So you've picked out your flowers, you've taken them out of the plastic and you've maybe made a little tape grid for yourself on top of your vase. We are always going to start with our greenery. So I picked out this really beautiful evergreen greenery that smells so good. It smells just like a Christmas tree. I love it so much. Uh, and it's gonna bring lots of really great texture and that's kind of why I picked it out. So we are going to start by obviously sticking it in. But one of the tips is to make sure that you don't have a bunch of leaves and things in your water. You want your water to pretty much just be the clean stems of your flowers. So that means if I want this whole piece of greenery to be in my vase like this, I have to lose everything below what I think the water line is gonna be. You can of course already have water in your um, vase, but today I just wanted to make sure that I don't make a whole mess with the water. So I didn't fill mine up with water yet, but I of course will do that at the end. So what I'm doing now is I'm just removing the greenery below where I think it's gonna be in the water line. And I always keep a piece of plastic nearby, one of the um, pieces of plastic that the flowers were wrapped in so that I can throw my greenery down onto it and uh, make for an easy cleanup later. So now I'm not gonna trim this one down to size, which is gonna be a tip we're gonna talk about here in a second with some of the other flowers. Um, because I like these to kind of be long and really dramatic and drooping off the sides. But as you can see, I made it bare all the way down so that there won't be any greenery in the water. So I'm just gonna do that with the rest of my stems. So even though I'm not gonna trim it down for size, I do wanna make a fresh cut on the bottom of the stem and I wanna do it at an angle so that it can um, drink up lots of water. And if you do it at an angle, that's like more surface area for the water to absorb and it won't ever just lay flat uh, at the bottom of your vase. So I have all of them trimmed down so that they're nice, all clean at the bottom, so we don't really have greenery sitting below our water line. And what you wanna do is kind of make them all kind of crisscross and stick in all different directions if you have long ones like this, so that it creates lots of dramatic length for your bouquet. And it's important for your greenery to be around the outside perimeter of your bouquet. Okay, so next we're gonna start with our flowers. So after your greenery, you just go to whatever actual blooms you picked out. I just picked out some lilies, so I have these white lilies and these purple lilies. And then I also have these really dramatic, I don't know what that's called, 
but it's going to be for like height and extra texture. So I'm going to start with these flowers. So you'll see that obviously this is super long, right? Instead of like just sticking it in there and having it be way too long, you want to cut it down to size. So you're also going to cut it on an angle. And what I always do is I just like hold it up to the arrangement. And I know that I want it to be more around like this height down here. So I just kind of estimate, and it doesn't have to be perfect. I kind of estimate that much of a chunk that I want to cut off. And then I stick it in and I decide, is that still too tall? I think it's maybe still a little bit too tall. So then I cut off a little bit more. Of course, you can always cut off more. It's hard to get more back. So I always, you know, do it twice instead of doing it once and then it's too short. But I'm gonna try and aim for about this height of the flowers right here because it's closer to the rim of my vase. So for those of you who go for the arrangements that are already pre-made, this is the step for you. You wanna cut your blooms down so that they kind of come out right at the top of your vase. You don't want a ton of this just like empty greenery sticking out. You don't wanna just stick it in like that. You want the height of your bouquet to be right above your vase and not for there to be a whole lot of empty space. So now I am ripping off the old leaves that we don't need here at the bottom, snipping it down and sticking it in and doing varying heights even with these white flowers. So they're all kind of in the same area, but like this one's a little bit taller and those are a little bit shorter. I definitely want to do this one a lot shorter because the bunch of these are looking pretty tall. I actually don't want to go any taller. I just want to go shorter. So if you do the same flowers with varying heights, then it will add a lot of texture as well, where ones are down low and the other ones are up high. That's because of the length that I cut the stems at. And then it just brings in some variation. All right, now I'm going to add some purple flowers. I didn't use all of my white flowers, but whatever I don't use in this arrangement, I will of course make other little tiny arrangements with, which is really nice. When you get a bunch of flowers, you can sometimes make lots of different arrangements. So I'm just gonna keep cutting them down to size and sticking them in, making them all different heights. Pulling off the leaves that uh, I don't want sitting in the water because that would just make the water slimy and that is no good. So I'm just choosing to kind of stick them in between the white flowers so that it goes like purple, white, purple, white, and so that there's some variation. So over here, I just have a bunch of white, so I'll stick another purple guy down in there. It's already looking so pretty. And another tip is to keep your arrangement turning so that you can see what's going on on all sides and that it will look pretty from all sides. So far we have the bulk of the flowers, the greenery sticking out. So now I want to add a little bit of height. And that's why I picked out these flowers. I'm also going to have to lose some flowers towards the bottom of the stem, which is really sad, like pulling off flowers. But you have to do it because, again, you don't want it sitting in your water. So I'm just pulling off these little flowers as much as it hurts, just a couple towards the bottom. And then I'm going to stick it somewhere in the middle because I want that nice, like, height in the middle now since we have it's not technically height because it's going out that way, but we have flowers going out that way. So now we want flowers going up this way as well. So I'm gonna pull off some of these flowers, give it a fresh cut end, stick it in. So I have three in there, but now I actually wanna add some to make it a little bit more um, horizontal as well. So I kind of feel like where this greenery isn't, it's like a little bit bare. So I'm gonna take one or two of these that I have left and stick them kind of coming out the side instead of straight out of the top. And I'm gonna use an odd number of these as well so that it always creates like lots of variety. Sometimes even the colors can be too symmetrical and that's not necessarily what you're going for with flowers. You kind of want it to be wild and lots of variation. So this is looking really beautiful so far and I really love it, but I also have some baby's breath. So I just want to stick a couple of these in and see if I like it or not. I think I will because this baby's breath is like really pretty and big. Sometimes baby's breath is like really small and the blooms haven't opened, but all of these blooms are like nice and open. So it's really pretty. 
and it'll just add that like tiny little touch. Um, I'm not going to use all of this and I'm just kind of breaking off like little stems, but still making sure that it's going to reach my water and just filling in any like holes that I see. It's definitely a very busy arrangement, so I might not add much more of this. I'll just do like one or two more. This one, oops, there it goes flying. This one and this one. Okay, that about does it for making this flower arrangement. So the last tip is to definitely use the flower food that comes with your flowers to pour in the water. So that flower food not only feeds your flowers better than water can, but there's also ingredients in there that help kill the bacteria in the water. So this whole video, we've been making sure that we don't have any leaves or greenery where our water line is gonna be. And that's because leaves and greenery make it so that bacteria grows in your water a lot faster. So if you use that plant food, it will help make that a non-issue. As always, I want to thank you for watching and I hope that this inspired you to see your home and arranging your own flowers in your home in a new light.